Hi, this is Dee Kaler with USC's Career Development Center. Welcome to Alumni Zoom Trips, our virtual webcast series with USD alumni experts that provide a glimpse into the life of our alumni in the aftermath of the pandemic. This program is co-hosted with the Office of Alumni Relations. Evan Wall is the Director of Project Management and Site Strategy for Catalan Pharma Solutions. He's a graduate of USD's Master's in Executive Leadership Program and holds a psychology degree from Carnegie Mellon University. At Calant, he provides leadership to the project management team and drives the firm's new business development efforts, both locally and globally. Prior to working in the private sector, Evan had an extensive military career with the US Marine Corps as a Naval aviator with several management positions, including Managing Director of Operations for Marine Corps Air Station in Miramar and Director of Air Operations for US Pacific Command in Hawaii. During this webcast, we'll focus on Evan's transition from military to civilian workforce and job prospects and hiring trends within the pharma industry. Evan, it's wonderful to have you here with us this morning. How are you? Thank you. It's great to be here, Dee. I'm curious about your outlook on the economy and what it means for job seekers. You know, I think the economy is just looking up from here with the COVID vaccine and, and everything kind of turning around. But I do think there are certain industries that uh, will benefit more than others. Um, you know, especially the biotech industry that I'm in now is it's very strong. Uh, supporting the COVID, you know, vaccinations. Our company actually has a location in Indiana that's uh, manufacturing the fill finish for those vaccinations. But um, also uh, the new biotechs that are inventing new molecules and small peptides that that are curing all kinds of things from cancer to lymphoma to to Parkinson's disease, etc. That that is really um, ha has seen an uptick this past year. Um, thanks so much for that. And how can candidates stand out in the job market? and get hired with Catalan? I think uh, the, the first thing is to network, um, is to meet uh, an alumni like me and, and reach out and just and make a connection and, and develop a relationship. Um, once, you know, that's exactly how I got my job here. Um, met the general manager three years ago. Um, you know, there was a position, but it didn't, didn't work out with some politics, with corporate, but I stayed in contact and we networked and, and had just kind of like a networking lunch every couple of months. And I initiated it, you know, I didn't wait for him to do it. I did it. And through that, we became friends. And through that, he learned about me. And, mm -hmm. you know, three years later, that three-year interview, um, I got offered a, this great position and, and I'm thriving because he, he realized I was the type of person that he wanted for his culture and for his business development and leadership team. So, um, that, that is the first and foremost thing I would do, um, as a student at USD is, is network, use this, use this network to, to help you get into the industry. Okay. Is Catalan currently hiring? Yes, we are, um, actively. And, and, um, we're, we have a building right next door called the clinical supply services building. It's a different business unit than what I work in, but, um, mm -hmm. they're going to have over 24 positions open. And this for the summer. So um, yes, actively hiring in San Diego for sure. And and my site, the uh, oral solid dose site here in San Diego, we're, we're always hiring. Um, chemists, scientists, quality assurance, uh, project managers, uh, finance, mm -hmm. uh, you name it. So uh, yes, big yes. What would you say are, aside from, you know, expert knowledge, top qualifications and attributes that you seek out in candidates? I think it's, uh, you know, some of the biggest things are just initiative and leadership, right? Um, personal leadership. You don't have to have a title to be a leader. You know, it's all about who you are inside and, and what you just get done on your own without being told to. And and those kind of traits are, are number one here. You know, also being able to get along with the culture, you know, um, being able to relate to people and, and uh, you know, learn how to read people and, and, and be a part of the positive culture and, and build that because that cause of culture just translates right down to the customer every time. Um, so those two are, things are huge. Obviously technical skills are important and being smart and being able to do projects and, and whatever, mm -hmm. but you know, 85% of it is relating with people, negotiating with people. It's that emotional intelligence. People. That's it. 
15 percent tactical and you can learn that all right thank you so much for that and um what does a typical day look like for you for How's me uh, <laughs> very busy um, i'm always I, i'm kind of doing two different jobs i'm leading the project management team 10 folks um you know who are managing all our customers and bringing their products their small molecules or peptides from from the, the bench they call it to the clinic that's kind of the the, the term for it and the clinic being clinical trials um so so they're taking their they're, they're handling those customers and i'm working with them all the time helping them refine their processes and, and get their jobs done better and also i'm working with the general manager on site strategy you know how can we grow develop the marketing plan um the business development plan um working with uh, director of finance on, on p l and base cost savings kind of thing so it's 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 really almost too different kind of jobs which I really love. And I'm also running a project. You know, I brought in a customer and um, I told my team, you know, I'm not gonna put this on you. I'm gonna take it from cradle to to the next steps. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm I'm even getting my hands dirty just to just to learn their pain, you know, and see where I can add value to change the process to make their jobs easier. So very busy. Okay. And how would you say your USC degree, um, your M, you know, your master's in executive leadership has prepared you for your role? Um, I think it's been invaluable. Um, for example, here at Cattle in San Diego, we have a, um, a, a book club. And mm -hmm. one of the books that we're reading right now is what I recommended, what I learned from, what I got from uh, MSCL. Um, and now the whole Again. site's reading it, right? So there's there's one influence right there. Um, is that? Um, it's influenced by Robert uh, Caldini. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, Cialdini, sorry. And it's it's a great book. And anyway, it, just that's just one tiny thing from my MSL degree, that MSCL degree. That's that's just happening here. You know, I'm using that leadership um, education for my team, and I know, uh, you know, it's it's working. You know, they they love working here. They have hard jobs. They do a lot of work, but at least they know their boss cares. You know, right? And it's called caring and candor from Gary Ridge, right? It's mm -hmm. I, I care, but I'm I'm direct to them and they love it. So um, it's just shorten this up. The MSL, MSCL degree has really helped me with my job and where I'm at today. Just being able to showcase that servant leadership, if you will, right? That's yeah. based on empathy and compassion and care. Absolutely. And, uh, what is most, so for people who are interested in a leadership role, a project management, a new a business development leadership role. What top advice would you have for them? Um, I'd say you know it, it really comes down to just you're you're marketing yourself right for the position. So make sure the resume kind of reflects, and then when you actually have that conversation and that interview, make sure it, it all matches up, right? So if you're looking for that management or leadership position, you've, you've got to say the right things. You've got, to, you've got to show competencies in those, right? You've got to show that, you know, it doesn't matter if you had the title, but it, that you've shown leadership in some sort of sense or fashion and it, and it moved the needle in your business or organization. And that's key right there. Um, if, you can, if you can do that and, and really demonstrate that in a discussion interview, I guess, uh, mm -hmm that that will get you most likely across the finish line to get a position like this. Okay, so demonstrating some tangible examples of how you have demonstrated leadership success. That's right. Okay, Absolutely. thank you so much for that. And can you tell us about your transition from military to civilian life? Um, what advice would you have for those looking to successfully transition to civilian workforce? Yeah, uh, for all the military folks out there still in the military, um, involved with USD, I'd say start early and be relentless. You know, use the skills you learned in the military and apply them to job transition and start very early. A lot of, a lot of military folks make the mistake of thinking, um, well, I'll just start six months out or I'll start, you know, that, that'll happen and they keep pushing it off. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem in the, real world, quote unquote, because it takes time. 
right? And, and time and opportunities tend to marry up. And sometimes it takes a lot of time to find that right opportunity. So <clears throat> in order to prepare themselves for the proper transition, it should at least be two to three years working on a resume, going to a transition course, reading books, working on a degree, doing anything you can, you know, still doing a good job for the military, but doing a good job for yourself. Because when you leave, that's it. It's just like leaving any job, you know, you're kind of forgotten about. And so um, you need to prepare early and, and do it often and do something every day. Uh, I spent a half hour a day for five years. I, I planned it out that far in advance. said, you know what? I know I'm getting out at this time. And this is what I'm going to do every day, something. And that little incremental one, you know, tiny percent adds up to a big percentage every year. And it, it, um, it directly equated to me networking to my first job and then networking to my second job and then networking to my third job. And then networking into this job. I mean, and then, you know, and the, and it all built on itself, right? So um, that's the best advice I can give. Just start early, start often, and network with folks that are already out and have been out for a couple of years and give you that kind of experience. And what are um, what are some things that you have done to reskill or upskill during those five years? Um, I think a lot of self-education. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm kind of more, I've been in more generalist positions, but... Mm -hmm. um, but really getting really good at those positions, right? You know, um, um, one of them was going through the MSCL program. Mm -hmm. That really helped me, you know, uh, shape my leadership skills for the civilian world. Uh, and, I, and actually gave me a better financial educa finance education with finance and accounting. It gave me a better marketing education and gave me all the other business stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And also uh, networking, uh, meeting the right people, getting a mentor having them kind of talk you through, you know, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what you should be thinking about. This is what, where this is going. This is what I think. This is my experience. Um, and then um, just self-educate all the time. Always be reading something. Find a book, read it all the time. Just just make time, you know, educate yourself because that stuff comes out. It'll go into your subconscious and come out in conversations and actions. So Sure. And talking about, you know, that self-education and personal professional development, what are, um, what are your top resources for keeping up to date as it relates to um, news and trends in your industry? Um, just be a part of the professional um, networks. For example, Catalan, we're part of the biotech industry, so we're a part of Biocom. And Biocom has conferences, classes, councils, networking, all kinds of stuff all the time. And then maybe look at something else like the uh, business chambers. Uh, we're also part of the uh, North San Diego business chamber, right? I'm very involved in a lot of the um, councils and leadership stuff there. And that keeps me up to, to the, with the plans and business trends, et cetera. Um, get, be a part of a volunteer club like Rotary or something. I don't know, you know, just to get to know that other side of humanity and, and to help out and give back. And, and all that kind of stuff can, can combine really keeps you very informed and knowledgeable where things are going and where you kind of need to position yourself and be. That's very helpful and build those connections and build out that really macro system that you need to continue to grow in your area right. in the field. And as a final um, question, what career mistakes have, have given you the biggest lessons? Um, I think, uh, yeah, that's a great question. The biggest mistakes I've made is jumping into something too fast. Right. Um, there was one job I had a couple of years ago and uh, I was kind of thrown into the fire, if you will. Right. And um, I just jumped in it too fast Didn't ask enough questions, didn't read the contracts, didn't um, get to know everybody around me enough to really learn the answers. And that became a financial mistake for the company. You know, I was forgiven, but it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And and I learned that right there. It's like, hey, you know what? Uh, slow down. You know, military people, like in my background, tend to want to like prove themselves right away really quickly. And you just kind of sometimes have to slow down. It's, it's hard to have patience sometimes, but you do that, you slow down, you survey the environment, you ask a lot of questions, you meet a lot of people, and then you get to solving problems and getting those short-term wins and working on your long-term wins. Um, so just kind of rushing into it. That's very helpful. You know, I would think that in the military, you're very results focused and want to get it done right away and everything is very time sensitive whereas here it's just the the need to do that due diligence and get all the data points before um, making a decision 
That's right. Helpful. Thank you. Um, and it's great to know that um, our students in alumni and career transitions can connect with you uh, Any for additional advice and, um, and opportunities. So we are grateful and hope that you'll have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you, Dee. I appreciate it.